G'day folks, today we've got Festool's HKC55. EB. EB, yes, a little bit exciting. Um, HKC stands for Handheld Circular Saw. Sure. So, not sure how the numbers and letters stack up, but that's what it is. I'm sure the Germans would know. But they will. <laughs> um, so this is our first Festool review on the channel. Yeah, not um, the first Festool you and I have used. No. Or have got. No. But first one we've reviewed, yeah. Which is kind of exciting. Yep. Um, we're going to spend a little bit of time because this saw warrants some detail, um, detailed chat. Yep. It's got some crazy features. It does. And it's the most versatile circular saw I've ever used by a long way. Yes. A long, long way. Yep, yep. So the big elephant in the room with Festool is always going to be price. Yes. So we're going to hit that straight away and tell you about it. It's yep. 1168, I believe. Yes. Just short of $1,200 for a kit. Yep. Gets you the saw, two ba two batteries, which are 5.2 yes. amp hours, 18 volt, Yep. and one of these tracks. What have what, what we landed yep. on for calling that thing? I think I'm going to call it the cross-cut sled. Cross-cut sled, yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's like a, a, a miter angled um, yep. track that allows you to um, just push it up against a piece of material and cut whatever angle you want yep. very exactly. accurately. Yeah. Um, great invention. Believe they're the only ones who do it. So I certainly haven't said it before. Um, we've got 60 degrees either side. This yep. thing is super, super. Loosen it off. Super easy. Super easy. Loosen it off. Put it at 35 degrees, 15 degrees, 60 degrees. You literally push it up against something and actually turn and then sled straight through. So, so easy. It is not a cheap rail to buy on its own, but that, it's damn impressive. It's going to come in the kit. It'll come this in the is the yes. 450 version. That yep. There's also sorry, 420. There's also a 250. Yep, and I think there's a 600 available as well. Is there? Yep. So. Sure. Um, the kit doesn't come with the big track here. We've got the big 1400, which is a standard festival track. Yeah, so we'll talk about that, that bit later. Right, but this saw is a jack of all trades. Yep. It's a specialist on this particularly. Yes. But it also can do regular track saw work and regular freehanding work. Really, really well, yeah. I almost cringe when we say jack of all trades, but you are right. Yeah. And when we say it specialises in this, it is just impressive. Yeah. Rafter tails, beams, dropping the edges off. There's no more up the ladder market and then, you know, either get a straight edge or freehand it off. Sure. This thing literally, you pop it up on the right degree and you just slide in it straight up. Now, the chippies that we dropped it off to Everyday Carpentry, I didn't get any footage, which really sucks. So, the, yeah, the t-shirts I gave them, <laughs> I'm going to steal them back off them, because you stink. No, they're good. <laughs> they are pretty good. Um, they absolutely loved it and didn't think that there was a weight issue. They didn't have an issue with having this hanging at the front. They actually want one that's 900, <laughs> so they can click on it and rip their flooring down. Wow. Okay. Absolutely love it. 
So that is just so simple to use. It looks fairly simple, basic track, yep. but once you click it in, the thing auto retracts. So you slide through, it does, yeah. and the saw retracts back. So you've got it, you know, flying around like a, a lightsaber saw. Mm. Um, but it, look, it does that job incredibly well. But yeah. I had balustrated, stair balustrated, just basic stuff in a factory. Yeah. Ran the balustrading up, got my angle and just sat it against it, zip up, went to the top piece, down, I'm done. So, I'm not measuring with a square, that sort of stuff. So good for your plum cuts in your rafters. And 100%. All, all that sort of stuff, really nice. So it is absolutely, it's, it's an extreme piece of kit for that. It is built around that. Yes. So when we come to using it for a standard track saw or a freehand saw, it hasn't got limits, but it's not quite it's as... It's not perfect for those. No. You kind of have to assess the value when you take into the fact that it can do all three things. Yep, yep. Um, but there's no other single circ saw that can do all these three things. Nor so the only this ones. at all. Correct. So as a track saw... Yep. Um, now there has been some people who've talked about this and reviewed it and said it's a little bit underpowered. Yeah. Um, we didn't find it. No. So as a track saw specialist, yep. it wouldn't keep up with the likes of a, you know, Flex Vault or twin 18 volt Makita or Vestal's own 36 volt unit. Yep. Yep. In, in raw power. Yep. You're probably not going to want to rip three sheets of flooring at a time with this. No. It's, that's, bit, that's fair. That's a bit, bit too much for it. Yep. Ripping single sheets. Yep. Or ripping pine. Um, we did 140, 35s, 190s, 240s. Yep. Didn't find it lacking. No. Um, so we actually disagree with those people. Yep. And think that it's actually got good power. You're all wrong. And and the everyday carpenter guys said that, didn't they? Yes, they, they did. Like, they like the power. Yep, they did. So as a track saw, pretty good, but you there was something you didn't like. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, uh, look, uh, dust extraction. Okay, so yes, so the dust extraction. When we're talking track saws, people having their head dusty uh, track saws are very good with dust extraction. Mm -hmm. If you got the right extractor put on them, right. Just because they've got that little bit of coverage at the front. Yep. Because this is a bit of a, hey, we want to do a few things, yeah. you haven't quite got that. But you don't have the enclosed... No, way. that's right. Yeah. No. Can I just quickly say, when you pair this with Festool's dust extractor, if there's anything that's going to make you buy into a system, mm -hmm. it's their dust extractor. <laughs> we don't have it here because they only loaned that to us. That was off its face, that thing. It Bluetooth good. 5, all the rest of it. But it was just a stunning unit, and they have the best um, dust extraction hose I've ever seen on any dust extractor, sure. by far. Anyway, moving on. So a good track saw, not yep. amazing. No, not amazing, but if I actually, so I just click that down, little black button up here, if I pop that up there, yep. that's now my plunge saw ready yep. to go. So I'm just gonna plunge down here. You wanna talk a little bit about one of the super features which involves- The depth control. Part of the track saw, yep. That's right, so at the back here you have uh, I need to set this down first, don't I, before I do that? Oh, do you? I think so. Yes, you do. Yeah. Um, so on the back here, you've got a little green lever here that yep. sets your depth control here. Yep. Really easy gauge to read. Yep. Really precise, you know exactly what you're setting at. And as soon as you let it go, it's there. Yep. It's not like a normal one where you've got to loosen it off, find your spot, then try not to move it while you tighten it up again, yep. which is painful, I think everyone would agree. Yep to get accurate ones with. I mean, it you is. know, framers may not care too much a lot of the time because it's near enough is good enough yep. when you're putting up a house, but um, this depth control is beautiful yeah. and it works with the plunge as well. Yes. So I can now press that button and drop down to a 35 mil I'm set at. Yep. Um, and it's gonna lock out at 35 mil. Yep. It's locked in now. Yep. And we can now do a uh, yeah, trench or whatever you want. Trench. Yeah. You or if you're only cutting something that's 30 mil, you've only got that five mil blade out. True, which is so a good So you've got the point. right amount of teeth. Good for safety, also better for cutting. Yes. So it's a really, really nice feature. Yep. Um, and I just love that not only for working in a track, but also for freehanding. Yeah, you're 100% right. The other thing I want to touch on quickly, when we talk about this, this is all encapsulated in tight. Now everybody who's used a circ saw and has had one for a while, when you bring a circ saw all the way up, that banana piece of metal, everyone's had one of their bender bits. So you Absolutely. sit there with a the hammer, bend it back, and it's got all that friction. This has got no friction. This is a velvet undies moment <laughs> where it is so smooth, it's like having velvet undies on, I promise you. That is an absolute banger of a, a feature, yeah. and that, to me, it just screams German. It's like, yeah. no, let's just do it properly. It's got some really nice features that we're going to talk about now, but that is probably the best one, at least for me. Yep. Absolutely love it. Super, hand, super handy for freehanding as well. Yep. Um, 
you know, I often see chippies and I do it myself sometimes as well. You need to do a check out on a start or whatever. You don't set the depth on your saw, you just kind of angle it over. It's a bit of a dodgy, it's probably yeah. not that safe, um, yeah. but that's a half second fit. It's so fast yeah. to change the depth on this that I wouldn't do it. No. I just set my 25 mil and do my two and you're away. do my two cuts on either side. Yeah. So um, brilliant and as a freehand saw. Freehand saw I think is pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, we talk about, let's say I'm right-handed, hold it there. This, what do you call it, auxiliary handle? Sure. Uh, gonna hold it in the front. All we're gonna do is flick our thumb and that guard retracts beautifully. Very nice. You thought maybe the string was a, uh, spring was a little bit strong, but for me, no, I've used fine. it a fair bit the last three months. I reckon it's a cracker. Yeah. So I've got no issue there. That is very tidy. It's really nice. Um, and and going back to power again, um, we wanted to know well, how does this go for when you're just throwing it around, cutting stuff hard. Yep. And uh, we compared it against, don't usually do this, but just so you know, one of our favorite saws is the Milwaukee Fuel six and a half inch saw. Yep. Um, it's been around for a long time, but it's still a really great saw yep. and, and quite powerful. And this is easily more powerful than that. Yes. Noticeably more powerful. So definitely got the guts for it. Definitely got the guts for a freehand saw. It's probably a little, it's definitely going to feel bigger and bulkier than yes. your standard six and a half saw. Of course. But that's because it's doing this and it's doing this. And you can, it's going to. The plunge on this, of course, is going to be so much nicer. 100%. As a freehand tool. Yep. Before I move off the track saw part, I just want to talk about, you have got the little couple of little cam adjusters here. Sure. So as always with a track saw, make sure you adjust it right, because what's the point of having an amazing kit and tool, and then you go to do a nice cut and you've got a wobble in it. It's yep. done. Now, to change blades, I really want to just talk on this quickly. Yep. It's called Fast Fix. Um, ordinarily, you've got to have your little tab here and you rotate your blade and push the tab in and then oh, lock it in, then find your Allen key. Yep. This, pull that out, so I'll do it again, pull that out, it's locked the button out, it's super safe, I can't turn this on now, there's my Allen key right there, laid on its side, by the way, whether it's by accident or by design, <laughs> it sits beautifully flat, yeah. I'm going to put that in and I can change my blade. That's off the charts, I really, really like that. Flick it back up and you're ready to go because you've just changed your blade over. The type of thing that you expect from Festival and no one else, really. Yeah, I, we only noticed it almost by accident as I went to do it, yeah. changed the blade, um, but I went, that thing sits perfect. Or nearly be sitting on the angle or something stupid. Now, it may have been just by mistake of like, you know, when you design all that, guess what? Works really cool and I like that. Yep. Um, the last adjustment to you can make on the saw, of course, is your bevel. Yes. Um, just a really simple knob on the back here um, that allows you to go from zero to fifty. Yep. Um, and and it uh, it's just nice. It's really easy to read. Yep. Um, you tighten up the knob. It's really um, really firm, isn't it? It is firm. Now, one of the small design things that you'll notice with it, ordinarily, if it's just got a knob on the back, say any brand saw, one knob on the back. It'll tighten here, but the front, if you've got it open at 30 degrees, mm. the front will flex a tiny bit. It will. You've ordinarily got it right at the front, and it flexes. Festool have this sitting in almost three inches, and it's all quite captive. Now, we haven't pulled it apart to see, but when it locks, I reckon it jams the two in and pulls it in together. When I put this out to, let's say, 15 degrees, I have got zero movement and mm. flex in the front here. Yeah. But there's just nothing. Yeah. So, um... Look, in summary, yes, almost $1,200 for a circular saw kit. Yep. It's, it's pricey, you get two 5.2 amp hour batteries. Yep. You get the coolest charger I've ever seen on it. Eight amp charger. Yep. And also, you love this, doesn't excite me as such, but sure. I think everyone should do it. 45 minutes to go, oh no, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, five minutes, it's ready to go. That's pretty cool. It's really swished, really easy to mount to the Eight wall. Eight amp, eight amp. Yep, that's a nice fast one. The the only thing I, I want to just quickly talk through, I'm a little bit salty on it. Sure. I think for 1200 each bucks, you've got a phenomenal kit and all the rest of it. I'm going to want to buy this, but I want a track. Yep. I actually want two. This track's 200 bucks. Oh, I just think it's a bit over the odds. Mm. Now, I'm all cool for innovation and all the rest of it. 200 bucks for a 1400mm track, I personally, I think is a little bit much. Yep. It is uh, significantly over its competitors yep. for essentially the same product. Yeah. Um, but in every other way, we're really impressed with this. Um, is it worth the money? How yep. long is a piece of string? You tell us. You tell us in the comments, please. Yep. But we're certainly impressed by what it can do. It's easily the most versatile saw in the world. Uh, 
for my mind. Yep, yep. I, I think it's an absolute cracker. The build quality is what we expect Festival. No, we haven't dialed it down yep. to find out what code bearing they're using. Sure. But we think it's a banger. We had a lot of good feedback on Instagram when guys saw we had it. Yeah. Uh, multiple people who have got seven, eight of these tracks and, and, <laughs> and link them all up together, fences, that sort of stuff, yeah. and actually buzz through it and say, it's a cracker. So you got to determine whether you think it's worth it. We yeah. reckon it is. Usually touch on the stats a bit earlier, but um, 4,500 RPM. Yes. About 4.4 kilos with a battery on it. Yep, blades, which isn't too bad. Blades are 160 mil, not 165. Not 165, that is true. So. Right, well, please like this video, share it with your friends, yep. hit the subscribe button up here. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Bye.